Do you grow any nut trees? No, but I could. But I was told, you know, when I came here, you can't because my, my heavy clay ground, because they have deep roots, but I know I can. And um, I just, I just, you know, um, it's a little late now to start, and, and I'm, I'm okay. But I'm, I'm sure I can grow great nuts here. Like walnuts and, and filberts will grow fine here. How do you harvest small fruits like cherries? I pick them and I go out and eat them fresh. And, and uh, my challenge is because they're small and they taste good, you eat too many, you got to run to the bathroom. You know? So, um, But, you know, I, I only eat things in season because I think that's the best time for them. It's one of the best. And to store stuff in refrigerators or, or freezing stuff is just inconvenient and not even that good after they're thawed out. So I just love eating things fresh in season. So, man, when my cherries are out, I'm out there every day eating all I can because they're just so good. Now, your reach is maybe seven foot <laughs> standing from the ground if you're on your tippy toes your cherry trees are a lot taller than that do you climb up on ladders or do you just leave the top ones for I the use crows ladders, or but that big one down there is coming down this year because i can't reach it and i'm going to take it down it's going to create wonderful wonderful wood for our um out outdoor um wood, wood fired oven and i'm going to plant a small tree that i can start reaching because it's just too big. It's, not, it's you know, and, and that's only 17 years old. When you look at the size of that trunk. Man, it's like you know, three and a half foot through. Right. And uh, but it's going to create wonderful firewood. And I'm just going to plant another tree right next to it and be able to reach them. A few of my subscribers uh, thought you may do it the same way that some of the apples, and just wait for them to fall onto the ground and then pick them up off the. The birds wood won't chips. wait. For, they won't. The birds won't let them wait till they fall on the ground. They get them before that. <laughs> Do you plant dwarf or semi-dwarf trees? All dwarf. And the challenge is that cherries don't come dwarf, and if they tell you they do, they lie. So those I have to replace every few years because they get too big. But everything else are dwarf. And I, I really encourage nothing but dwarf because when you grow in a compost environment, they're going to get huge. My dwarf trees are putting on, you know, four feet of growth a year. And they tell you in books that you can maintain a dwarf tree at six to eight feet. Am I putting on four foot a year? Come on, let's do the math. So again, the challenge when you have a covering is trying to restrain and, and hold back growth, not make it grow. So always plant dwarf. And plant them at least 15 feet apart on apples and pears. I'd go 18 if I did it again because my 15s are all touching. And um, on, on plums, go wider. On cherries, 25, 30 feet because they're going to get huge and there's no way to stop them. Now, I know that cherries don't have the weight that apples do. But is there a way to prune a cherry tree into you know, cutting off the leader, not having any of the root suckers or the suckers that are going up? You know, I mean, is there a way to make it to where a cherry tree would be low hanging like your apples? They won't be low hanging, but what I do is always, I, I, my tree over there I always takes centers out because I'm trying to reduce the height to my 10 foot ladders. I don't want to go any higher than that. And so as it grows, I always take the centers out and develop the lateral branches to be, be the finish. And that way I always have stuff, you know. Where I can reach, but the weight. Thanks so much. Right, I'm just gonna set them on your yeah, porch. sure. Appreciate it. Sure, sure. Kind of you. Yeah, thank you. And and so um, but eventually, like I said, they get too big, and you got to take them out because it just there's no way to stop. If planting an orchard of apple or cherry trees, where should the crown of the tree be in relation to the wood chips? The crown. The root, the top of where the roots stop where's, and the bottom of the. In? The wood chips are full of air, and you can put them as high as you want because it's not going to have any effect on the graft. Because it's not dirt, and it's going to settle. I've put wood chips 16 inches deep right after my tree trunks with no, no negative effect at all. Nothing ever rooted out from the, from the, um, the original, you know, original root stock. So all the stuff they tell you is ridiculous, and I was letting me appeal to the evidence in nature. You've been out in the woods when the wind blows, and you'll see needles banked up against the trees a foot, foot and a half deep. Well, it's pulling those away. The tree's fine. Again, all the stuff we're being told is really not, not true. In one of the letters that I just brought you today, uh, one of the guys said that he planted uh, maybe an apple tree or something like that, and his neighbors in the nursery and everybody told them not to stack up the wood chips all the way up, and he just did it anyway because he said that it was okay. And later on in the season, he looked in and the tree was completely completely fine and perfect. Yeah. It's just, you see, the stuff's full of air. It, it, it's not going to suffocate or do any damage. You know, again, if you look at nature, needles blow up against trees, you know, foot, foot and a half deep, no one's pulling that away. 
it's just so bizarre how we get these weird ideas, you know, and, and it was dirt to be something else. This is not dirt. This is living, live, full of air material. It's composting and settle and break down. When I was at um, Steve's garden, the guy who gave me the corn seeds, um, he had a couple trees that he had kind of fencing around the bottom of the tree to keep the rabbits from, I guess, eating the base of the bark. And all They do it all the way around the tree and mm -hmm. kill off the trees. Have you ever had any kind of issues with that? Well, because I have dogs, I don't have rabbits doing that. You know, the, my dogs keep all the critters out of here, so I don't have those kind of issues to deal with. So how do your fig trees do in the winter? They lose all their leaves, and if it gets really cold, a lot of it dies back. But they never die back totally. Always something comes back from the root. And um, I've had it as good as cold as 8 degrees here, and I, my figs have all survived. You know, a lot of, sometimes they have a lot, of, a lot of die back, but they always grow back. And it's not a problem. Have you ever thought of, I don't know, wrapping or tinting them or something over the winter when it gets really cold like that? No, because i got other things to do, you know, and I just let nature take its course, and whatever happens, happens okay. Uh, there are some people who live in colder climates, <laughs> and they're wondering, what is the best way to avoid frost damage to their trees? Just plant hardy trees. When you buy the tree, they'll tell you how, how, how hardy it is, what temperatures it can endure. And you want to buy something that will live in that live where you live at that level, and you're good. And if you have healthy trees in a good wood chip environment, you know, I could say nothing in nature where you're living is dying in the winter. So just connect. There's a there's an insulation on the ground via the covering. If you do the same thing in your yard, you're good. This person currently has a few trees in pots because they don't know if they're going to be living at that same place next year. Should they wrap the pot for the winter to help keep it? shielded from the cold or what can they do to keep that potted tree alive for the winter just bring it into a place that's not cold put it in your garage or something or a shed you know just because it's, you know winter time it's not doesn't need any sun or anything so just you know put it in a dormant place after i plant a new tree how long until i should do my first pruning pruning is a stimulant it really encourages growth and so I prune, even if it's a little bit, I try to prune everything, you know, right away. And sometimes when you get a tree, something's out of balance. So any cutting is a stimulant to, to the root development and the whole structure of the tree. So pruning is a major benefit to the tree. So as soon as you can is ideal. Really. So when you buy a sapling from the nursery, you bring it out here, no apples on it yet. It's just ready to be planted. You plant it put the wood chips around and then you you kind of look at it and just go okay snip here and snip here yeah just you know on, even if it's just a whip i'll take a little maybe an inch off the top just to make a, a, a you know a cut to stimulate the tree is to you know invigorate itself and develop roots and become more vigorous because pruning is a major stimulant to the development of the tree now is there too much pruning that you can do? Like, I mean, if I, oh, can, yes. I, can I cut it today and then a month from now do a cut and a month after that do a cut? I mean, it, when does it, the diminishing returns happen? Well, you know, you can, you can butcher things and take, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is more than one third of the entire tree at any time is over the top. You never can take any more than one third of the total mass at any one time. When you do that, the tree automatically goes into a mode of throwing out suckers and just becoming a wild thicket, a mess. And so you've got to, you know, if, especially if you have an old tree that hasn't been done for years, you want to do it in stages. First year, take out all the crossovers and stuff that shouldn't be there. Second year, start bringing it in. But always maintain a level of less than one-third of the entire mass at any one time. And you just said that if you have an old tree that uh, you just chop and chop and chop, it's going to start shooting out suckers all over the place. Is there a way to prune it so it doesn't shoot out suckers as much? Yeah, reduce your pruning. The less you, less you cut, the less suckering it's going to do. When do you go to the nursery for your new trees? February, because that's when they show up. And you want to go in February because that's when you're going to get the best selection. Now in February, can we come with you? Well, I'm not going to be buying any trees this year. I'm, I'm, I'm good, man. You're killing me. <laughs> Sorry. But. People want to see, I mean, we, we saw the printing videos um, from last year, 
and when you were talking about you know when you how to pick out the perfect tree kind of you know this is what you're looking for and this is what you're looking for and some people need a visual of well, that kind want, of thing. Well, if you want, I can thing. go to the nursery and point out trees. And if I and I buy that one, I can do that. You and I are going to the nursery in February then. Didn't even think of that one. <laughs> Usually these answer questions come up, and I'll and I'll type up there. Um, uh, it's either on this video or I don't know the answer, but. I know what Paul would say, so you know, here's what Paul would say, I'll get it on tape next time. And I just, that's the first time that I've been like, oh god, I just totally didn't even think to put it in the garage. <sighs> Learn something new every time, even me. <laughs>